And now, our next host, Alan King. Isn't it amazing what one man can do with a roll of rental wrap? <laughs> Good evening, and welcome to Monday, Bloody Monday. <laughs> Tonight is a night filled with excitement and surprise, joy for some and disappointment for others. It's an evening filled with curiosity and suspense. For I'm sure in everyone's mind right now there's one question. What is Alan King doing here? <laughs> now, considering the fact that in 14 years I've only made two pictures, I can understand why I've been given this great honor. 14 years ago in the Helen Morgan story, I played a young gangster with my old nose. Last year, in the Anderson tapes, I played an old gangster with my new nose. I may have it removed completely. Actually, the reason I had it fixed is because I was turned down for a role in the picture. You producers will know that. They said I looked too Jewish. It was for the part of Tevye and Fiddler on the Roof. But I must confess, I feel a little like an outsider here tonight. For first, I'm not a resident of this great city of Los Angeles. I still make my home in New York. But we do share something in common. We both have mayors who live out of town. <laughs> Mine because of fear and yours because of boredom. <laughs> you know, my friends are always asking me, Alan, how could you live in New York? Move out to California, everybody's so relaxed. The reason you're so relaxed is because you got so many massage parlors out here. <laughs> Everyone tells me that Hollywood is the cultural center of the world. It's got movies, television, theater. Forgive me, but personally, I still prefer the Broadway theater. Not that you, the plays out here are bad, but somehow I don't enjoy seeing The Great White Hope with Eddie Bracken. As an outsider, to me, the most fascinating thing about the motion picture industry is the concept behind the Academy Awards. This event is so dramatic and mind-boggling that it's being watched on television in five out of every six homes in America. Over 100 million people are viewing this program at this very moment. Do you realize what that means? Tonight, in all the motion picture theaters in America combined, there are 17 people watching movies. <laughs> That's not bad enough. Six of them are rushes. <laughs> Two guys are waiting for the next Ali Fraser fight. And Jerry Lewis. When it, I'll give you all the time you need. When it comes to making motion pictures, you people are the best in the world. And I mean that. Technically, there's no end to the miracles you accomplish. You scale mountains with your cameras, descend to the bottoms of oceans, Journey into disease-infested jungles, risking your lives so audiences will be entertained. But what do you really know about danger? When was the last time you sat in the balcony of the lowest Pitkin in Brooklyn? <laughs> now that's danger. I'm trying to get crime back into the streets so they'll leave me alone in the movies. <laughs> in my neighborhood, The Godfathers is considered a training film. I mean, what do you know about going to the movies? You go to private screenings. When was the last time you stood in line? Let me tell you what it's like. You arrive at the theater at 5.30 to be on time for a six o'clock show, and you find a line that starts at the box office, goes all the way around the block, through a Walgreens drugstore, into a Greek delicatessen, through a Polish tattoo parlor, where you can watch a guy misspell the word mom. <laughs> but it's worth it. Where else but New York can you see in one block, Slaughterhouse Five, Minnie and Muskowitz, Desperate Characters, and Dirty Harry, all standing in line next to you? <laughs> you know what a thrill it is to stand in the cold for four hours, shivering, hungry, and wet, hearing people coming out of the theater saying, Don't go in, it's not worth it! 
The first thing you do when you get in is you buy a piece of candy. Now, I know you people are always complaining about the rising cost of production. When was the last time you bought a piece of candy at the movies? When I was a kid, you bought a Baby Ruth for a nickel. Today, they only have one size, family. A 50-pound box of chocolate with doilies. <laughs> it looks like a candy gram you'd send Mama Cass. <laughs> well, my favorite is the hot dog. You haven't lived until you've eaten a hot dog that was cooked in the lobby of the Criterion Theater. <laughs> one bite and your entire life flashes before your eyes. <laughs> but... But it's never hot. They fool you. They toast a napkin. It comes in, you know. <laughs> Believe me, being a moviegoer isn't easy. But enough of my problems. We're here tonight to discuss your problems, the awards. Now, I don't want to say that I personally have any favorites. So what if Fiddler on the Roof doesn't win? <laughs> the worst thing happens, the Academy gets a nasty letter from the Anti-Defamation League. That's nothing compared to what's gonna happen next year if the Godfather doesn't win. <laughs> now, you know, it's only natural that everybody would be making jokes about the Godfather. But if I may take this liberty, I think that Paramount is to be congratulated. Last year for Love Story, and this year for the Godfather. And, and you know, they did it the hard way without ever mentioning the word mafia or cosa nostra. In other words, being the godfather is never having to say you're Sicilian. <laughs> and after that joke, starting tomorrow, my wife will warm up the car. <laughs> and now, on with the awards. To present the best achievement in live action and animated short subjects, the lady who gave so compelling a performance in the last picture show, Cloris Leachman, and the gentleman who gave, the gentleman who gave an equally compelling performance in Shaft, Richard Roundtree. Well, I'm new in pictures, and the award we're giving sounded very technical to me. But I found out it's really the seed from which all movies grew. Of course, that's precisely what the first films were, live action short subjects. With a bow to Max Sennett, Mary Pickford, Lillian Gish, and above all, yes, above all, a very deep bow to Mr. Charles Spencer Chaplin. Do I dare call him Charlie? Why not? The whole world does. For the best achievement in live action short subjects, the nominations are Good Morning, produced by Danny Evans and Ken Greenwald. The rehearsal, produced by Stephen Verona. Sentinels of Silence, produced by Manuel Arango and Robert Amram. Mm -hmm. And the winner is. Sentinels of Silence, Manuel Arango and Robert Amram. Thank you very much. Our gratitude to the old members of the Academy. Thank you. Thank you. The best achievement in an animated short subjects, the nominations are The Crunch Bird, Ted Peacock, producer. Evolution, Michael Mills, producer. The Selfish Giant, Peter Sander and Murray Schustak. And the winner is. The Crunch Bird, Ted Peacock. Oh, Crunch.
once burned my asker. <laughs> Oh, I'd like to thank my partners, Joe Petrovich, Len Maxwell, Carl Fisher, Doris Petrovich, Frank Walkansen. You know, this picture is only two minutes and 24 seconds, and I've got nine minutes worth of credits. <laughs> but I really would like to thank all the members of the Academy for having so honored us. Thank you. <laughs>